morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 2. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The word of the Lord. Several years ago, my family and I went to the Frontier Culture Museum in Stanton, Virginia. And uh, we went for its holiday tour at Christmas. Now, as some of you may know, this museum is a collection of outdoor exhibits that recreate homes from several of the cultures that immigrated to America during its frontier days. For their holiday tour, each home is decorated according to the Christmas tradition of the culture it represents. For instance, we went to the German farm and learned about the Christmas tree and traditions surrounding the use of evergreens as decoration. Next, we went to the English home and learned about the early practices of caroling and were allowed to sample some wonderful Christmas cookies. And then we went to the Scotch-Irish farm with its Presbyterian heritage and learned how to churn butter. <laughs> That's right, there were no Christmas decorations, no holiday cookies, nothing. Indeed, as we approached the Scotch Irish house, the owner came out and chased off fellow museum staff dressed in festive garb because they were papists and proceeded to denounce the ob observance of Christmas as pagan. The Bible, he explained to us, gave instructions on how to observe uh, rites such as the Lord's Supper and baptism. But Christmas was a purely human invention which the Presbyterian Church rejected as unbiblical. So he said. My question is this. How did we get from there to here I mean, did someone, you know, how did the Presbyterian Church go from denouncing the observance of Christmas as a pagan rite to celebrating Christmas as a Christian festival? I mean, did some Presbyterian somewhere wake up one day and say, we were wrong, and we are going to start celebrating Christmas now? I don't think so. Were there debates on the floor of presbytery about churches that ordain unrepentant, practicing carolers? <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if there had been. But in truth, I suspect that it was a slow process of change, and truly an amazing one. Consider this. Presbyterians today sometimes express the concern that the celebration of Christmas is becoming too secular, and they talk about putting Christ back into Christmas. Yet our forebears in the Presbyterian Church worked hard to, as far as they were concerned, rescue Christ from Christmas. Does that sound odd to you? Yet what if I were to tell you that is our task today? 
What if I told you that it is time to embrace your inner Presbyterian and rescue Christ from Christmas? What would you say to that? Well, friends, it's true. That is our call today from no less than the prophet John the Baptist to rescue Christ from Christmas. But how? Is Christ imprisoned in these holiday trappings? Do we follow the lead of our forebears who took sledgehammers to, uh, and the like to pagan symbols like these and to free Christ from their entrapments? No. No, instead we follow the example of John the Baptist. For when it became apparent that Jesus, the one who he, John, had proclaimed to be the Messiah who had come to judge the world with fire, was instead continuing to minister to the world, John did not give up on Jesus, nor did he pretend to understand what was going on. Instead, his faith led him back to Jesus in order to ask, in essence, what gives? Friends, this is how we rescue Christ from Christmas. Like John, we want to be informed by our past without being imprisoned by it. And also like John, we want to be able to recognize the work of Christ in the present. So with our Presbyterian heritage in mind, let us take a hard look around this sanctuary and ask the hard question, what gives? Have we strayed from the true path or is something else going on? Well, here is what I see. Throughout our history, the Presbyterian Church has long defined worship as the Word of God preached and the sacraments rightly observed. And I believe that both are still central to our worship. Our decorations and celebrations of Advent and Christmas remain in a supporting role. Yes, it's true that such celebrations are not found in the Bible, but neither are they denounced by Scripture. Instead, Our celebrations are part of our offering to God. They are secondary and have not been allowed to take center stage or replace preaching or the sacrament. In truth, if we were to get rid of our Christmas celebrations today, I believe that we would be throwing the baby Jesus out with the baptismal water. Instead, we are not prisoners of our past but are free to join in the celebration of the infant Jesus and at the same time rescue Christ from Christmas by keeping our worship centered on preaching and the sacrament. But there is more. As you know all too well already, life can take many unexpected turns as it did for John the Baptist that raised the same question in us that he asked, Is Christ the promised one, or are we to look for another? Yet far from being offended by John's question, are you the one who is to come? Jesus pointed to the evidence of God's kingdom breaking into the world as signs that he was indeed the one. So too, the church seeks to foster a deeper understanding of Christ by following John's example. Like John, the church does not need to pretend that it has all the answers, but instead addresses the hard questions of faith directly. As John went directly to Christ for answers, so too the church goes directly to Christ through prayer and the study of Scripture. And because, like John, we are sometimes rattled by the world and unsure about what it means to call Jesus the Messiah, we become impatient with injustice and ask the question, What gives in order to seek understanding? In other words, we do not celebrate in order to escape the harsh realities of this world, but in order to raise the question, why does the darkness persist? In so doing, the church directs us to prayer and scriptures for a deeper, fuller understanding of our faith and helps us amid the continuing darkness of the world to see the ongoing work of Christ shining 
and all lives. Let all God's people sing.